flying off the ceiling, taken by this feeling. Baby, we're invincible. Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Knotts County. As always, if you are enjoying the safe, drop a like on the video. That'll be fantastic. I don't know why I just went all ASMR there. Hello and welcome back. Right, let's get into things. So, we're starting on the page of the New Saints, or TNS, or as they used to be known, Total Network Solutions, and they'll be dancing on the streets, no doubt. But someone pointed out to me, and I noticed it when I was editing as well, that they've done good some... They've done some good things this season, so I thought we'd have a little look at this, prompted by a couple of comments as well, particularly someone pointing out that they beat Angers. Um, so yeah, I thought we'd have a little look and see what they do uh, before Regen Sunday. So you can see that they beat Ritarai, who I literally have no idea who they are, Lithuanian league side, uh, beat them 3-0 on aggregate. They then beat Karabag, which is actually a pretty big deal, to be fair. Karabag have got quite far in recent years. 2-1 um, on aggregate. They then got knocked out by Sparta Praha, which makes sense, 4-0 on aggregate. But they went into the playoff round as a result of that, where they beat FK Sarajevo 2-1 on aggregate by winning the away leg and reach the Europa League group stages. That has to be an absolute miracle. Um, surely no Welsh team's ever done that before. I, I do remember, was it Bohemians of our, uh, Northern Ireland that did quite well a few years ago? I think they played Spurs. But the fact is, they got into the group and then their first game was a 1-0 win away at Angers. That surely has to be the greatest result in the club's history to beat them. Obviously, they've lost to Celtic at home, 5-1 by Salzburg. Only 1-0 away, amazingly, to Salzburg. And they've actually only scored one goal since then, which was against Salzburg. So, not the best in the world. But the fact is, they won a Europa League group game and their coefficient must be going through the roof. So, fair play to them. So, before we get into anything else, it's time for Regen Sunday, your favourite time of the week. If you want to participate, head over to the Discord, link in the description. There's a lovely group of people over there. And obviously there's a Regen channel. Drop your Regens in the chat. You know I always go after a certain type. I do try to find, I do try to like highlight some of the just amazing players. But really lately, it's been funny name, obscure nationality. Those are my two main things. And oh boy, have I got some for you today. First up, Juanito Necht. Um, 55 caps, but this is from FM17, I believe. In fact, it says it in the top corner, Matt. He's from the Northern Mariana Islands, which is freaking amazing. Uh, for a player of that quality, and also, didn't the region faces just look so much better on FM17? Then, as fatty. I mean, we, if only we had him, booty, and ass man all in our midfield. Then, Ibrahim Undoli, a Rwandan central midfielder. But what really surprises me about this guy is he has no senior caps for Rwanda. How stacked is their national team? Then, Maud Fazrul Ismail, who is a Singaporean, or, Sing yeah, I'm guessing Singaporean, uh, striker playing for Valencia. Lovely old job. Then, Nils Holm, an Iraqi guy called Nils Holm, who plays in Spain. What more do you want from life? Next up, Rihard Rekitskis, a Latvian left-sided winger. This guy apparently just moved for £121 million. There is a really good Latvian player in this save as well. He, he came through at RZ, and I did nearly sign him, but he was just out of our price range at the time, and now we've kind of overlapped to the point where he's not really good enough anymore. I'm really struggling to find players on this save at the moment. Everyone I scout, even from the national teams, is just not really coming up good for me. I might have to return to our old sort of uh, casting a wider net and just scouting a load of youth intakes purely, because right now we're just not really finding the talent that I was before. And obviously we've got better, but we're not that good yet. Then Olivier Rakoto... Mm, mm, Rakoto Arisoa. Br Madagascar names are forever going to be the bane of my existence, but I do want some because, you know. And lastly, Super Mario. And apparently this is not... this. I've seen the, the uh, personality page. Not only that, but someone else has found one. So incredible stuff. We've had a youth preview as well. There's always oh, action packed to tell you. We've got a couple of Premier League games today as well. But before we get into any of the off camera stuff, it, it's time to have a look at some youth stuff. Ha 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 ha! Terrific. I genuinely forgot that, that the, the Golden Generation starts with the terrific group of players. So I was like, that's terrific. That's fine. And then I read the rest of it. No foreign players this time, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, but it'd be nice to bring through a bit more English talent, I suppose. Healthy number of new fullbacks. A lot of wingers in the system. Fullbacks, plenty of promise, pr plenty of promise, which have been decent. Minimum of two centre backs that look rather promising. Okay, one top prospect in the centre of midfield. Okay, that'd be kind of nice to have a because we haven't had a big. Oh yeah, I've actually got Brendan Mills. What am I talking about? Uh, we need to get him into a bit more. Wiggers look prospects look good. We have one young left winger from Derby who has caught the eye. I'm guessing he is the sort of maybe the standout one. Not that we need another left winger, really, but hey, I will take it. Um, this is going to be an exciting season. And I guess it's because we have really worked on the youth stuff lately that maybe we're getting a bit of a bump on that, and that's pleased. Right, off-camera games. There's some bad news in there, too. 
relatively good performance against Palace. Still had to work for it, though. They were no pushover. And to be fair, I think they were like 11th in the league coming into this match. Took until the 65th minute. And who else but Dario Santana to give us the winner. And he has really been excellent this year. As much as, like, he started really well for us last year. And then he kind of faded off towards the end. I felt like that was an anomaly. Because his actual statistics, looking at the uh, analysis, were brilliant. And, yeah, he's really showing it this year. I think that was his fifth of the year. And then El Haji Silla grabbing on off the bench to make it 2-0. Palace did create a couple of chances. But luckily, we managed to get away with the victory. But you'll see Jean Carlos broke his foot three to four months out. And then away to Arsenal, it was a 2 1 defeat. We really have this weird thing about Arsenal. I think we've lost to them every single time we've played them. And I don't think we've played badly against them once. Genuinely. Once again, solid performance. Chances created, roughly about the same as them. It's just one of those things. Kevin Negord uh, gave him an early goal in the ninth minute. Then Moussa Dembele's penalty kind of wrapped up the game. We did get one back through who else but the son of war with another goal for himself. A really nice one. Uh, this time Stepanek feeding it through to him. But then Gael Perrier decided to get himself sent off. And it was kind of done after that. But still, another solid performance and only a one goal defeat, most importantly. And all that leaves us seventh in the league. All very, very dandy right about now. Um, to be fair, we're actually only three points behind Manchester United in fourth, but our main route is going to be to try and finish seventh. And I still believe that Newcastle are going to be the ones that fall away rather than Spurs, but you never know. So obviously there's a lot of issues for us now. Perrier suspended, Asman suspended, Griffiths out, Giancarlos out, Alberto out, Kazakov out. It's, um, it's a bad time. In fact, I'm just going to do this and try to work out who's even going to play. I would much rather play Ricky Griffiths than Sasha Hansen. We're not going to play that approach, are we? We're going to play that one. Um, just shuffle this around, see if they want to change. No, they don't. Okay, so Fernandez, frankly, has done an okay job playing as a left back. So we'll have to continue on with him for now uh, until one of the other two returns. Celso and Andrea Shenko will play at the uh, centre-back partnership with Dubois and Silla in the midfield. Is that really what? Oh, because Asman's out, isn't he? Um, yeah, that's the right pairing. Stepanek, Santana and Guerra. It's just, oh, dearie me. Hansen, like, mate. Like, I know that Guerra can play there, but I just, I really don't want to take him off of his best position. I'm doing it. I'm playing Armando Senya, the young Albanian lad that we brought through many, many years ago. And frankly, I feel like there's no one that could do a worse job than Sonja Hansen. So we may as well give the young Albanian a chance in the first team, make him first ever appearance for us. Brave, I appreciate, but I feel like we've got no choice at this point because I just do not trust Sonja Hansen. The guy is about as reliable as British Rail. West Brom playing an incredibly defensive system. Um... Just into oh they got Sam Field that's pretty cool and Sofia and Amrabat okay and they've got inverted wingers on both sides as well of the midfield and Liam Miller up top right then away at West Brom at the Hornthorns they're second from bottom in the league these are the kind of games that if you want to qualify for Europe you have to go out and win basically but they're going to get people forward eventually I suppose due to you uh, Stepanek could do with a bit of defending here it's sort of he did the idea of defending all right there Amrabat uh oh long range strike coming in and up well, there you go. Sofia and Amrabat gives West Brom the lead at home to us with the long-range strike there. Uh, it's a good effort. Low. I think maybe the goalkeeper could have done a bit better. Perhaps slightly undecided. Right, now we've got a lot of work on our hands here. There's too many people clustering there and they don't get out to him soon enough. Perhaps. I mean, it's a good strike, to be fair. Mm. Possession's ours. I don't think we're creating enough. Oh my god, what a ball. Ferreira's in. And Miller. Oh my giddy aunt. It's 2-0 to West Brom. Second from bottom, and they're 2 0. This is the kind of result we cannot afford. But unfortunately, I just think we're missing so many players right now. This is just bad from us, though. Straight from the free kick, in behind for Ferreira, ball across, Liam Miller scores against us. That hurts. That hurts me real deep. We're pressing up, going to our much more aggressive system, but we have to score three times now, really. I will not be happy unless we win this match. Dubois, there's unlikely anyone's going to be back that wasn't really available for this game. And Stepanek, oh, what a finish. West Brom 2, Notts County 1, Thomas Stepanek. I mean, people said he's been stepping at the inconsistent this year, and I fully agree. His return this year has been poor. This is unbelievable from Remy Dubois, though. One touch to get it out of his feet. Lovely. Look, the way he caught that on the outside of his left foot and wraps that into the net. Right, let's go. Oh, dear. Disappointing first half. 2-1 down. We've got 45 minutes to turn this around. I think we're capable of it, but we've got to be better than this. We've not looked at our flowing best today, and I guess it's just because all the partnerships have been broken up. There's a lot of players playing out of position or just in uncomfortable positions. Chitiu, Stepanek. But the likes of Stepanek, he's all the way through. Oh my goodness, what a lovely finish from Thomas Stepanek. Where has this been all season? West Brom 2, Notts County 2. Steppers absolutely stepping up. Dubois just with a pretty aimless ball and Chichi just knocks it into him. But it's this first touch. Gets it out of his feet, skins the defender and nobody comes to close him down. But that is an insanely nice finish again for the second time in a row today. He is on it today. Good stuff. We need to be on it for the rest of this match. Schlager's well out of his goal here. Oh, gone went off them. Silla's got it. Can he turn it through for someone? He's got men left and right. Stepanek is one of them. Is there a hat-trick on the cards for Thomas Stepanek? 
No, not quite. They probably should have been, though, in all honesty. I don't think they can handle the press. Get us ball in. Ball across and Dubois hits the post. And why did he clear that out for a corner? It was He was facing the other way. Despite all the missing players, I feel like we've got what we... We've got enough. Dubois. Senya. Not seen a lot from him today, unfortunately. Lovely ball from Dubois. Santana's got two men around him. Digs across in and get her! Oh my goodness. It's West Brom 2, Knox County 3. I'm tempted to leave it on this approach because I'm concerned if we sit back, we might end up facing the same problems as before. The Santa this ball from Dubois is, as usual, wonderful. But it's this cross from Santana and the touch, control and finish from Guerra takes it down. Simple finish for him. 15th goal of the season and 12th in the league, my lord. Because at the moment, we are very much in the ascendancy. If we grab a fourth goal, then I'll simmer down a little bit. Uh, oh, chance for Liam Miller, perhaps. Oh, win it. Yes, Andrea Shenko. Keep going. Ball across. And, oh, no, 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 no. Keeper should have had that. And Rabat post. West Brom appear to have kind of stepped it up a notch now, though. Uh, but maybe here's our chance to do so. Chitty, round the side for Guerra. He's grabbed one already. He's got great dribbling ability. Takes the defender on. He's not going to quite get past him. No, Stefanik will. Oh, and it's on the rebound. No, not quite. Uh-oh, set piece time. Chitty, you clears Hestad. No! And they've scored from a free kick. I mean, that wouldn't have affected our tactics at all. Like, even if we had switched to the other one, they've scored from a free kick. Or technically, I suppose you could... No, that's direct, I'd say. Basically, the ball never really leaves the box. It's headed down awfully there. Hestad knocks it back in and Ibrahim makes it 3-3. Oh my God. Um, yeah, we have to keep pushing. I have a feeling this is going to end up being a three-all draw, which is a shame because I thought we turned it around. But as, like I say, I don't think had we switched to the other approach, it would have made any difference from a not conceding that goal perspective. Oh my Lord. And again, I like we have a high line, which is fine, but for him to be able to score from there, I don't think it's got anything to do with the high line either. Because again, he's relatively Oh my god. <sighs> Stepanek, come on, lads, let's have another crack at this then. Stepanek, Silla's all the way through. And it's saved. The moment we took the lead, I thought, oh, fair enough. We're, we're in total ascendancy in this match. And somehow we've lost it. I four goals conceded against West Prom. Oh well. I yeah. I know we could have switched back to what we were doing, but I just really don't believe that would have made any difference to the types of goals they conceded. Because they just didn't close down Liam Miller for that fourth goal. He got the ball and they sort of walked away from him instead of trying to close him down, which is the opposite of what you'd expect from a very much pressing approach. I have no words for that. That's just one of those things, I guess. We've got to just move on. Oh my God. Right, we're back. That was an absolute debacle. Um, but I guess you're, back, you're guaranteed to have some. We had that win against Manchester United, but I don't know. I thought we had that, but that's just life sometimes. But now, so Celso is suspended this time. Um, Alberto, and so we've got a slight few players back, few players now gone. But more importantly, people are knackered. Let's just see what my assistant even wants to do here. Um, Hansen back in. I just really don't know how much I like that idea. I'm actually tempted to play Assman further up and have uh, Silla and Dubois in the midfield. And then have, yeah, I'm not playing Chitty at left back. Perrier is now back at least. But now we've lost Celso. So Andrea Shenko will start again. But look at Chitty. I mean, we've got no choice but to play him. And despite our relatively excellent form, we've now slipped down to eighth. This is concerning. Um, I mean, the fact is we scored three times against West Brom, and that should be enough, but to concede four. And unfortunately, it comes down to the fact that we're missing so many defenders. I just want to see what Asman's capable of doing in a slightly more advanced position, uh, where he can really utilise that shooting ability of his, and maybe see if he can come up with something. He's in there again, and it's saved by Levakovic. He's getting into good positions so far. Ooh, right on the stroke of half time here. Surely not. Get us ball in. And it's Andrea Shenko with the header on target, but couldn't score. Well, half-time, um, Thomas Stepanek has been appalling, unfortunately. he The inconsistencies have really been brought out in him this year. He has not been on it. We've been the better side on the night, controlling the match, but we're not really creating anything at the moment. Back for Dubois. He's got to look cross-field. You know he will. Find Santana. Can take his man on. He's through. Blocked by the last defender. But Andrea Shenko does well to mop up. Ass man. Stepanek. Oh, great tackle. Brilliant tackle on him. Ball across and Guerra. What a save from Livakovic. Come on. Even if it's just a cheeky one from a corner or something. Guerra's ball headed away. Silla picks it up. It's a good angle for him. He's going to end up shooting, isn't he? Andrea Shenko brings it down. Oh, no. No, he doesn't. Wilson's got it here. And nobody's going to track. Are you serious? Well saved, Suarez. He had to be big there. The chances have been there for us tonight again. Guerra's ball. Perrier and it's saved again. Silla? Neil, oh, why did he pass it? actually can't believe they've just done that. He has a clear shot at goal and he's just randomly passed it to a guy who's marked up. I don't know. Guerra dinks it out wide for some reason, despite the huge amount of players in the box. Santana, ass man. And he's gone for goal and tipped over by Lovakovic. 
I'm at a bit of a loss as to what's going on in these last two matches. Gareth Ball in Perrier! And it's another save by the goalkeeper. Uh, yeah, I don't know how we've not... I don't know how we've only taken a point from these two matches. Given the number of shots and chances we've created. Ah... Uh, mentalness absolute mentalness as usual the goalkeeper for the opposition is man of the match i don't know that is just insane the fact that we've gone through those two matches and not won either of them um and we haven't even been that bad really but that's life unfortunately you just can't afford to be that bad at the moment we're above newcastle back in the seventh spot but ah dearie me awful play in those two matches still only by the one goal lost there but should have beaten wolves definitely the better side on that one against west brom when we got three two up it just seemed like that was inevitable but then out of nowhere bam bam because we won our group, we then don't have to play in the first knockout round. That's kind of interesting. I'm tempted to come back here for uh, West Brom and Aston Villa. So we try and get a revenge on West Brom. Because then we'll have, you know, Spurs off camera. But that's too close for us to really be doing a live come on it. Man United is almost certainly just going to be a note nailed on defeat. And that way, after that, we can then come back and do some Europa League goodies in the episode after, which is going to be a lovely old time. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this episode, and I hope you have, in spite of what was a bad little performance from us, and hopefully we can just get some players back, get some consistency by the time it comes around at the end of the month, and West Brom and Aston Villa come around again, because we need to start picking up some more points, because that was just poor from us after a really, really good run. Uh, we've shat the bed a little bit there, so if you've enjoyed it, drop a like. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, and I will see you guys very soon. And as always, hold your gun, Capybara. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.